In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Rescue Set from The Mandalorian. Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video. And as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Rescue Set from The Mandalorian. Now this is supposedly this year's PulseCon 2022 exclusive for The Vintage Collection and will be available to order shortly after the show i think maybe saturday night and i think it's going to be around 70 dollars this one i got from robot kingdom i believe they're based in hong kong so i got it imported it cost me a little bit more to get it imported but the one thing that strikes me about this set initially was the size of it it is a lot lot bigger than i thought it was going to be uh, judging by the sort of photos that we got you can really see there with the scale of bosk how big this set is and robot kingdom packaged it amazingly really really securely and it arrived in mint condition so really really happy with that so in this video we are going to be opening up the set to see what it's like inside we're going to be checking out all of the figures you get three figures and a little grogu as well so we'll see the differences between previous figures that we've got of course this is the first time that we're going to be getting to see a 3.75 inch dark trooper although this is a battle damage version it will give us a good idea of what the mainline release one is going to be like. You can see Mando on the image there has got various accessories for his whistling birds and some fire effects coming out of the one gauntlet. And I do believe that Moff Gideon has a soft goods cape. So it's going to be a good set to take a look at. And obviously at the end of the video, you can decide whether you think it's worth the $70 I think they're going to be charging for this. But correct me if I'm wrong if that's the wrong value, but I think that is what it's going to be costing. So with all that being said, if you do happen to enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like down below because it does help the video and the channel. I much appreciate it. So thank you for that. And let's take a look at the packaging. So first off, there's the front of the box. You've got the Mandalorian logo with the racetrack design. You've got the Dark Trooper there. As I mentioned, Mando with his extra accessories. You've got Grogu with the binders. You've got Moff Gideon there with a the soft goods cape. Kenner logo, the rescue set. And, you know, it looks it looks a pretty good box. If you're an inbox collector and you're going to keep this sort of thing in the box, I think you're going to be quite happy with the packaging. The top of the set, we've got some more images from the set. You've got Mando there with the spear going through the neck of the Dark Trooper. You've got the face off between Moff Gideon and uh, the Mando. And then you've got the scene there where he's just about to reveal himself to Grogu, which is a nice touch. The other side of the box is exactly the same. The bottom of the box, there is nothing on there. It's just the side of the box that's different. As you can see there, this side here has some Imperial sort of panels and stuff like that with a bit of control panel. So that's on one side. And then on the other side, you've got the same image, but then you've got the logo with a bit of a write-up about the set there, if you want to pause and read that. Now, I think what's going to happen is this whole thing is going to slide out to create a scene. So again, if you're an inbox collector, you might want to sort of slide it out and display it like that. We'll have a look at that in a second. One thing that I did notice is that there isn't a vintage collection logo on the box, which... I felt was a little bit odd. All right then, so here is the set with the outer sleeve removed. And as you can see there, uh, you've got the Mando and the Dark Trooper. Grogu's in there somewhere. You've got some accessories for the Mando and then you've got Moff Gideon. Um, very much like the sort of promo images that we have already seen. The back part of the inside of the box has this uh, Imperial sort of scene again with the panel there. So you could maybe have you know, the scene set up with Moff Gideon and the Mandalorian having a bit of a scrap. So at the end of the day, this is one of those like convention exclusives. A lot of it is to do with the packaging and things like that, very much like they did with the Emperor last year. So, but I want to open up because I want to take a look at all the figures. I want to check out all the differences and I definitely want to get my hands on that Dark Trooper. And here are the pieces outside of that inner box. And basically I had to open up both ends of the box to get each piece out. This one came out that way. That one came out that way. The whole thing wouldn't come out that way. So just bear that in mind if you are going to be opening this set. All right then. So here are all of the figures out of the packaging. And I just want to line them up here for you now. So we can just take a very, very quick look at them before we look at them in more detail by themselves. So we've got the Dark Trooper on the left there. We've got the Mando and we've got Moff Gideon. Now there are some slight improvements to both of these characters. I will go through those in a second. Mainly the paint apps for the Mando. The paint apps are slightly different for Moff Gideon as well, but it's the soft goods cape and the way they've accomplished that, which I'm actually really impressed with. 
But it's the Dark Trooper really that's the new thing for this set that of course most of you guys that are watching this video want to check out and we will be doing that in a second. But one word of caution, this isn't going to be the Dark Trooper that you're going to be getting in the main line because his head does have significant battle damage on it. You can see he's got these like wire effects hanging out of the helmet there. They are sculpted on, you can't take those off. So essentially you are stuck with a battle damaged Dark Trooper for this particular set. There's no way that you can change that. It doesn't have a separate head or anything. Although he does have the separate hands, these are the fist hands that you can change over quite easily on that figure. You've got the miniature Grogu figure here with the binders. Now the binders do remove off of his wrists if you wanted to do that. Um, apart from that, I do believe that this Grogu is very similar to the one that you would get in with the Ahsoka Deluxe set where he's like reaching out. That's pretty much the same sculpt that they've used. He's like sitting there all sort of scrunched up with his robe type thing scrunched up with binders. And that's basically the difference. But I'm pleased to see that the eyes are painted on well on this figure. In fact, the paint apps on this whole set are pretty good. And the Mando especially has significantly improved paint apps which we'll go through in a second but first of all let's take a look at the dark trooper also there are some other accessories which i haven't got on show here you do get a jetpack for your mandalorian which is actually painted a really nice silver i think that's the shiniest one that we've got so far if you look on the back there it's not painted so you've got that sort of gunmetal gray color plastic but on this side it's been coated in a really shiny paint which is good you get this tiny weenie end of the spear which I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do with that. That would be so easily lost. You also get the fire effects for the Mando. You get the whistling birds here for his one gauntlet. And then you get the other one for the fire effect for his other gauntlet. You also get the flame effect, obviously, that wraps around the Dark Trooper so we can see him on fire. All right, then. So here is the Dark Trooper up close. And as you can see, there's those wire effects coming out the bottom of his head. If we move his head slightly up, as I said, those are sculpted on. You've got the big hole in the back of the helmet there. And all in all, you know, if we can just imagine what the Dark Trooper is going to be like with a different head, the rest of the figure, I think, is going to be pretty much what we're going to be getting. And he looks awesome. He's super shiny. Loads of articulation and everything. Just turn him around so you can see the back of him. It's a really, really nicely put together figure, this one. Uh, he has his shoulder armor here which is a slightly softer plastic to allow for his arms to move up he has a ball jointed waist there that you can see he has like a belt going around with some pouches on the back and he has these nice sort of silver joints all around so he's a really really good looking figure of course really shiny it's going to reflect quite a lot in the camera here the blaster i am pleased to say is a sort of more solid plastic it's not so rubbery that's really good to see and you've got some detail on there as well as you can see there but not really any paint on that particular blaster there so he's a good look at his red eyes on the helmet and the detail of the sculpt going round really really good awesome uh characters these and you can just see all the sculpting work on his back there some really intricate stuff going on and in terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, but it is restricted slightly by that piece there. He has the ball jointed shoulders. He has hinges at the elbows, which swivel, and he has swivel and hinges on the wrists. That ball joint on the uh, torso there that I mentioned, he does have the new style hips that you can see in there. And you've got some silver detail going around the upper part of his leg there. He does have a split which is covered by the armor. He has the knee joints. Again, there's that piece of armor on there on that knee. And he also does have a hinge and rocker ankles. Now I've got to admit, I did find it difficult to get this guy to stand up. The legs were a little bit funny from the way he had been packaged within the set, but in the end managed to do that all right. And yeah, awesome looking dark trooper with the battle damage. I think if they really wanted to go all out Hasbro, they could have included a standard head for the Dark Trooper. I don't think really that would have taken too much trouble. As I say, in this particular set, we're stuck with one with this, uh, you know, sculpted on damage with all wires hanging down from the head. Got some red markings on his torso there. All in all, awesome looking figure. 
As I mentioned, you get the fists that come out quite easily. You can replace those hands. And you get the fire effect for the Dark Trooper, which now I've taken it off, I've got to work out how it goes back on. But essentially, it's just going to wrap around. I think that's going to go around his neck like that. So we'll do that now. So there he is, all on fire. So it wraps around his arm, goes around the back of him like that. You can see the back. And it goes around the front and all around his neck. So entirely up to you whether you want to display him like that. Um, but it, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm not really into these fire effects normally, but um, sometimes they do look okay. They're getting much better at it, put it that way. All right then, so when it comes to the Mandalorian, here he is here. This is the soft goods cape version, which was originally exclusive to the Razor Crest. And now in this set, we get another soft goods Mando with all the damage at the bottom of the cape there. Looks pretty cool. You do get the spear for the first time, but it is the paint apps for this figure that I like the most, as well as having the rocker ankles. This was basically the base figure for the Maldo crease with the spiders. So here he is here with all the snow effects on his legs and everything. But you can really see the difference in paintwork on this one. Like for example, on his like thigh pad there, you can see that they've actually got some different colors going on. You've got the silver outline and then you've got this darker silver inside. Whereas this one is all one silver, you can see that there. It's very difficult in the light. You can see it there, just there. And you can also see that they've used a different color for his pads that are hanging off of his belt and his knee pad there. This guy has got the same color as his actual garment. So you can really see the blue. So I'm not too sure which one is more screen accurate, but I think, you know, with the extra added detail that they've put on his armor pieces, I'm really, really happy with this one. I, you know, I much prefer this one. It looks a better Mando. Now, the only thing that I'm not overly pleased with with this particular Mandalorian is the fact that they've had to amend his gauntlets to incorporate a bigger sculpt so they can get the fire effects in there for the whistling birds and on that one for the fire effects as well. If we look at the other Mandalorian, he does not have those. That is a better look, in my opinion. And, you know, they've had to do that just to get this fire effect in here. So you can put the whistling birds piece into here let me just try and do that and you can see those whistling birds like flying out of his gauntlet so for somebody that isn't really into the fire effect pieces the problem is once you take that out you're left with a gauntlet with a hole in there which you know isn't too great but I guess that's the only way they could do it same with the fire effect as well that goes into that one there and these aren't actually too heavy. They're not as heavy as the one that comes with the incinerator trooper. So it doesn't really droop down his arms or anything like that. And there you can see that one in place as well. If you look at the back of the figure, he does have the hole still for the, his rifle, which doesn't come with the set. And he also has the hole in his back for his jetpack, which is here, which I've shown you already, which is nice and silver. I won't go over the articulation of the Mandalorian. He comes with his side blaster as well. As you can see, I'm not going to go through the articulation because at the end of the day, we've seen the articulation for this figure a lot. But I would say, as I said before, the paint apps, I think, are massively improved. If you look at even the silver pieces around his uh, like bullets or whatever that are on his boots, this one is a lot cleaner. It's much it's just had more care and attention to it, I would say. Now, finally, on to the Moff Gideon figure. Now, the only real difference about this, apart from some paint apps, is the cape. And I love the way they've done the cape. You can see the soft goods cape there hanging off of his back. It's not around his neck. It's actually on these elasticated pieces that go around the shoulder, which you can't really see that well on the front of the figure, which is pretty cool. I do like the way they've done that. Now, if you compare him to the Moff Gideon that we already have, it is an exactly the same figure. I would say the skin tone is ever so slightly different and the hair is different as well. This one is gray hair and this one is jet black hair. Apart from that, it's just the soft goods cape. The rest of the figure is exactly the same. He comes with the same dark saber and that's about it. Decent Moff Gideon and improved cape. For sure. Also, I just wanted to show you very quickly that the spear can go right through the helmet there, through that hole. And when doing that, I also noticed that there is an extra joint on the neck as well. So you've got the barbell at the top, but you also have a joint at the bottom of the neck as well. So uh, for added, added movement. All right then, guys. So that's it for the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. There you can see I've got the Dark Trooper and Mando in a pretty decent pose there. 
bit of an action shot there, very much like they've got on the package there, just to show you that it is possible to have Mando holding the spear with the spear through the head of the Dark Trooper. We've got Moff Gideon standing there with Grogu. So let me know what your thoughts of the set are. To round it up, we've basically got two figures that we had before. We've got the Moff Gideon that's improved with a soft goods cape and some different paint apps. We've got a all new improved Mandalorian with the rocker ankles that only previously came with the spider set. He's got the soft goods cape. So if you didn't get the razor crest, you've now got a Mandalorian with the soft goods cape. We've got Grogu in the binders and we've got the all new Dark Trooper, which as I said before, Hasbro really could have included a normal head for the Dark Trooper. So then for people that want to add him to their ranks of Dark Troopers, but no, we've only got the head with the battle damage. That's a bit of a shame. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next one.